I'm here with another guy I met on TikTok. That sounds so bad, but we never actually met on TikTok. We just laughed at each other's videos, started talking. You're a real estate agent, Evans St. Gerard. Robert. Evans St. Gerard. How's it going over there? It's amazing, but we've never we've never physically met, have we? No, no. We've talked on the phone, we've texted, and uh, like you said before, we, we watch each other's TikToks and we laugh <laughs> uncontrollably. So it's almost like I've known you for a long time, even though I just found out about you recently. You too. But what, one thing I was happy to uh, see that we uh, share uh, we share real estate love. I've been selling real estate almost 30 years. H how long have you been selling real estate? Uh, I'm on my, this is my eighth, eight, eight going on to nine years. Do you love it? Uh, depends on what times of the day you <laughs> ask me that question. Most days I love it. Other days, uh, but honestly, no, I, I like, I love, I love what I do. Okay. Well, share with me. What are the things that make you not love it? Do you share, be honest, just open up. Be honest. What, what I don't, well, um, all right, let me start with what I like about the business. I like basically working with the buyers, uh, listening to what their needs and wants are, getting, getting them what they want, um, handing them the keys and watching them, you know, later on a couple of weeks go by, see what they've done with the place after they purchased it. What I don't like about the business sometimes, um, it can be very competitive and very cutthroat sometimes. For, for We're all in the same pond. We can, we can play a little nicer in the sandbox. That's one of the major things I don't like about the business that much. Yeah, but the agents that, that do that, don't you think that hurts them in the long run? Don't, do you think? Yeah. And there's a lot of agents that do mislead you know, our clients also. That, that's an issue. And then you have to re-educate people on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. You know what I hated? Uh, you're bringing up a topic I never – this isn't what we were going to talk about. But I've always hated when I was selling these ads that say, I, don't, I sell your house in 90 days or I buy it. And the fine print on that, tell me the fine print on that ad. They don't really explain everything. It's basically it's kind of buyer beware. If it sounds too good to be true, most likely it is. Yeah, because what they're going to do is say in the fine print, we're going to ask uh, 200000 for your house. If it doesn't sell in 90 days, I will buy it, but at $160,000. Do you know what I mean? And they have an investor who's yeah. obviously going to buy it on 80 cents, uh, 70, 80 cents on the dollar. So they had to have that all lined up. You're never going to sell it to this guy because you'd be crazy. Uh, yeah, it's kind of misleading or sometimes it's a scenarios like what you just mentioned right there. Sometimes just other stuff basically that agents are not telling their clients or if I'm on the selling side, I'm working for the seller. Sometimes the client will come to the house and I, it's not my client, so I won't say anything. But sometimes I'll overhear the agent say something to the client. and I'm like, why are you saying that? That's not accurate. I mean, I put all the information out there and you're saying the wrong thing on purpose. And I know I've had the conversation with the, with the agent. This is all the information about the property. And then they're just saying something totally different. We need an example. We're all sitting here listening. Spill, spill, spill. We're listening. Uh, they might talk about the school district being something that is not, or just little, little things here and there. You're like, why would you say that? Like in New York, we're not allowed to rent the basements. And sometimes I'll overhear some clients, well, some agents will say stuff to the clients yeah, you can rent out the basement, and that's a big no-no here. So where you where do you sell out of? You are in. I, I wanted to joke about it. Where where do you sell out of? We sell. I'm in Queens, Queens, New York, uh, home of the. Uh, it, it, it breaks my heart to say this. Home of the Mets, but I'm a Yankees fan. Yes, I know it's kind of weird. I'm a Yankees fan who lives in in, in Queens. Um, but uh, we also have uh, JFK. Is, is Queens a city? Or is it like a um, district? It depends on who you ask. Honestly, it's not a city, but Queens feels like a city sometimes because there's like different sections of Queens. I can't really describe it. You would, to describe it to somebody outside of Queens, it's, it's kind of weird. It, Queens is its own little thing. It's its own little country. Countries, plural. Countries. Okay. I, I have a good friend that... Uh, that is lives in Queens. Maybe you know him. Well, I don't know if he's a good friend. He probably he wouldn't say that. But he uh, he drives a delivery truck, uh -huh. and uh, he's his his wife is always fighting with him 
And his dad lives in the basement, I guess, which he's not supposed to do. Is his dad named George? <laughs> yes, yes. I've yes. just seen him around a few times. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the company of uh, the driving. They never got into it. The delivery, the delivery service. Yeah, and he was the king. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm familiar with him. I, I've seen <laughs> okay, him so and his you, friends you do know around him. a few times. <laughs> when I think of Queens, I think of that show. One of the funniest yes. shows. Yes, Um Queens, uh, TV shows like that, King of Queens, uh, I think Archie Bunker, a few other old TV shows basically have been shot or, or around or based in Queens. So there's quite a few things going on here. So what's your price range, your average price range of a house? Price ranges, they run the gambit. Um, we, we have high, high, um, high price range in certain areas, basically it'll be like over a million and up. And then you have other areas uh, near near the water. Basically, might be four fifty and up. Uh, some parts, basically, like where I live in Queens Village, um, around five to six. So it depends on the different areas. And you have condos and co-ops. Price ranges are all over the place. Okay, so King of Queens, a TV show. The house that we see in the opening and every once in a while showing the house they're in. You know what I mean? How much would that house? That would be? probably be probably about six or seven. I believe that's supposed to be set in Woodside. It might be a little higher. It might be in the high sevens, not close to eight. Okay, so that's the only reference point I can find. Yeah, Sunnyside, base, I, I think it's Sunnyside or Woodside. I don't remember exactly where the show's supposed to be set. Okay, so we now let's get into a little little gritty, nitty real estate. Uh, you said what you don't like. What do you love? Get into people, into the, the, the homes of their dreams, whether it's on the buying side or basically helping the people sell their homes and they want to buy another house or stuff like that. Just helping, just helping people. Do you enjoy listing houses for people, putting them for sale? Yes. I like working with the buyers, but I like the listing side even better. You mean you like the buying side better? I, I started out as a buyer's agent as well. I'm part of a team. There's two of us on the team. My partner handles the seller side. I handle the buyer side. But I do have a lot of connections and I do get a lot of seller leads and sometimes I work those ones as well. So it depends on the time of day and who I'm working with. But majority of the time is the buyer side I like working with the most. But the seller side is looks pretty good as well. Okay, I got a question for you. I'm a buyer sitting at home. I live in Queens. How do I pick? Why do I pick you and how? Like, how do I know a good agent? What are the things I look for? Uh, you want to make sure the agent's honest. They know the inventory. They know um, you want to know how long they've been in the business. What's the track record? Um, you want to know who uh, who they can refer you to also because it's not just buying a home. You also need a mortgage, a lender, home inspector, attorney, insurance company. You need somebody who has connections to all those things. Which me and my team we do have that. Okay, how do I know if an uh, agent's honest? How, how do I? You can tell basically when you're talking to someone if they're if they're honest or not. You have a gut feeling. We all have that that intuition when you're talking to someone. You get you the hairs in the back of your neck that will stand up. You'll know. All right, you know what? I'm not feeling too comfortable with this person. There's something about this person. I don't know what it is. Something I'm not feeling comfortable with, or the other other way. Basically, like, you know what? After talking to this person, I don't know them, but they made me feel very comfortable. And I, I can not only would I work with them, but I can refer my grandma, grand, great grandma. I can refer my whole family to this person. And I wouldn't, I don't, I don't feel that. And you also want to make sure the person's not a salesperson pushing you too much to do something you don't want to do. They have to make you feel comfortable. Buying a house can be very taxing. It can be very complicated. Yeah. It can be overwhelming. But if everybody, the attorney, the, the realtor, the banker, if they kind of know each other and have worked together in the past, it it's got to be, it's got to mesh Amen. and it's all, it's all a team. So it's not just the buyer, it's the realtor, the attorney, the, it's pretty much everybody. It's all one team. And if they're all on the same page, they're, the whole goal is to help the buyer get to point A to point B or the seller from point A to point B. Okay. Well, have you ever you had this happen? The lawyer sitting there, we can't close. The funds haven't arrived from the bank. Who's the banker? Who's the broker? Oh, we don't know. We got to email them. You wait. If you know, if they know each other, it's a phone call. Hey, hey, Frank, can you send those? Oh, yeah, yeah, right now, boom, boom. But if nobody knows each other, you're waiting two days for an email. 
things can go wrong yeah, that, and delay. That could be very tough, but the communication is very important. You want somebody who can communicate not only just to the buyer or the seller, but also to the other parties, the other agents involved, the loan officer, everybody basically. You want somebody who can communicate. They can. They have to have good com, uh, communication skills, uh, negotiation skills, and uh, they make most important. They make you feel comfortable. That's the whole thing. If you're not comfortable. Things can go crazy real quickly. I would use you as a realtor. Why do you think I would use you? <laughs> uh, because I'm a funny guy. <laughs> yes, you're half crazy. <laughs> your your TikToks and your Instagram. I love that about social media now because you can show people who you really are. They don't just get the. For me, years and years ago, it's just a face on a picture. You know what? I was nervous to do anything on TikTok because I didn't want to do the dancing stuff. I'm like, all right, you know, how do I make my stuff entertaining? <laughs> And still fun and still educational. So it's kind of a hard juggle. You want to show people a glimpse of who you are, but not too far out. <laughs> you, you want to just give them I, a glimpse. I've passed that and line. And if they like you, they like you. <laughs> they, they'll know in a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds if they like you. Yeah, I, I think I've passed a line on that. And that's one of the reasons why I like your videos. I'm like, all right, this guy's funny. This is somebody I can actually hang out with. He's in my age group, and it's good to see somebody in my age group doing stuff. I'm like, wow, we don't, we're not all old, old fuddy duddies, and I can't believe I actually use those words. I never used fuddy duddy before. I think we've retired that word from now on. Hey, well, we're gonna say it one more time because the TikTok is filled with <laughs> fuddy duddy. The word is There's millions of us, but we can't hang out. There's. A, do you know why we can't hang out? Well, six feet apart. Yeah, well, hey, well, we're doing great here. We can get five feet, but. Uh, my good, one of my good friends was a uh, the head trainer for the Blue Jays, and you said you were a Mets fan. No, a Yankees fan. I'm a Yankee fan. Yes, I don't. I don't like the Yankees. It's kind of heartbreaking uh, not to be in a game, but you know what? Just like everything else, right now, pretty much everything we're, we're adapting to what the new lifestyle is right now. So if it has to be virtual, it's virtual. I, I didn't even hear a word you said. I'm still looking at you thinking you're a Yankees fan. Like it, I said, basically, uh, I kind of I'm missed not going to baseball games. You're a Yankees fan. As a Yankee fan, I kind of missed that. But at, right now, priority is basically to keep everybody safe. So it, it's okay. Basically, we can watch stuff on the on TV. We can watch it on, on uh, computers. As long as everybody's safe, that's the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, it, it's it's true. And uh, I... No, you know what? I don't care anymore. I, you're a Yankees fan. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I'm a huge Blue Jays fan. And, and uh, the Blue Jays aren't bad. Oh, I know, but my buddy now is for working a minor, for the Yankees. For a minor league team. For a minor league team. <laughs> Delete everything. Too soon? Too soon? <laughs> <laughs> we should someday, we'll go to a game if we're ever allowed to go to the games. I'll come down. We'll go. I, it, you know what? It sounds funny, but I am kind of a small town Canadian guy. And going to Queens kind of scares me. Uh, no. I mean, honestly, if you're coming to the airport, you're already in Queens. There's two airports that we have here in Queens. Uh, we have, like I said, JFK, the most famous one. And then you have uh, LaGuardia. Well, I've been to Queens. It's kind of it's kind of like that cousin in the family that nobody likes to talk about. That's, that's Is it really us. true? I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if I'm a buyer, I'm going to choose you as a realtor, right? Yes. And, and what else are you going to give me it, for service? And if you have any uh, relatives here in New York who are moving to Canada, I know a, a real good guy basically who knows his stuff. Who's that? He has he has access to a lot of properties. Uh, he also flips homes, so I might be able to point them in the right direction in Canada. Yeah, I, I, I would love a referral. I'm slowing down on the flips. I, I uh, did too many, got a little over my head with them. Then uh, it was all good, little road bumps. And uh, I learned a lot doing uh, a lot. I was doing a hundred flips at a time. Like, isn't that crazy? So I'm I'm down now to twenty five, and I'm going to get down to ten, and I'm going to enjoy my life and and start selling. So yes, send the referrals. How many uh, transactions you got going on right now? Uh, we have. I have to look on my MLS right now. I know that we have six currently that are still available. I think there's ten in contract. I have two offers that I'm actually putting in after we speak. Two new offers I'm putting in. So, How many deals, when you crossed. write an offer, how many of them go together? What would your percentage be? Um, I'd say maybe about 65% are our own listings and the rest basically are my buyers or my teammates' buyers. You have, have a good market share there. 
Uh, it's interesting because I don't just only work in Queens. I also work in Long Island and Brooklyn. Um, so those are other boroughs in the in New York. Boroughs. <laughs> don't ask me what boroughs are again. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> those are other towns, mini cities, basically in 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 down downstate New York. So uh, go over really quick. To say it again. The five things somebody should look for in getting a real estate agent anywhere, not just you, in anywhere in the world, maybe most of the world. All right, so you have to be honest. I mean, you, they have to be honest. You have to feel comfortable with them, and they have they have to have a good track record. You have to know how how good they are at what they do, what their specialties are. If you're looking for a specific specialty, that person should be the right fit for you. Good. You know what? I don't you have to be comfortable with the whole thing. Yeah, you got to be super comfortable because you're going to spend a lot of time with this person, and it's a big deal. You just spending a lot of time with this person. Yeah. So don't fall for if you're a buyer and you ask your agent how long you've been selling for, and he says, oh, my office has like 400 years experience. That didn't answer the question. That means this is his second day. That's another thing. You want to make sure if you're asking a question, they can answer it directly and not change the subject to something else. Because <laughs> some good sales guys can. Some people can. Some people can't. Yes. And, and you'll be able to tell basically, all right, does this person have my best interest in heart? Yeah, so they're going to have your best interest at heart. So uh, literally, they could say, I've been selling for two days, but I'll give you my full attention. I have access to other people that have information. And you are my only client right now. So I am going to find, like, you're going to be the best realtor ever for you because I have no one else. That's an honest answer. That's an honest answer. And honestly, if that person, you can tell basically this person is passionate, they will go above and beyond to get you what you're looking for. So that's something, don't discount someone because they might have two days on the job versus somebody who might have 20 years in the job. I mean, you have to look at other criteria. Like I said, they have to be honest with you and you can tell when someone's being honest or not honest. So honest comfortable, their connections, what other assets did they bring to the table to help you out? But you have one strike against you and we're going to end on it. Down with the Yankees. Ah, can't stand them. They're going to you know be, I, I think they play. I don't have any Yankee hat with me. I don't have any memorabilia here. No, I don't want now. to see Yankee member. I know what it looks like, but they play together soon, the Blue Jays and Yankees. We'll do a little TikTok, maybe your double FaceTime on Instagram or something of us. You know what? Let's do it. Done. Let's do okay. It. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. We're going to bug you again. <laughs>